I'm not trying to give you all a sermon or anything like that, but I do want to give you one platitude. One platitude. Yesterday I said comparison is the thief of joy, and it is. Today we're going to do a comparison, so I'm going to remove all the joy. We're going to go and compare some roles from Jeremy, but before we do that, um, here's what I want to say. I'll give you like a two-second thing here. Um, when you compare roles, when you are at a table, and I have done this, I know you've all done this, um, you've been at a table, you're playing your strategy, and somebody goes off on like a 30 roller, right? Which happens, we've all seen it, or even a 60, a monster roller. And you walk away and you go, damn, I really should have made more on that, <laughs> right? Like, like I failed. Like I, the one time I got this idea where we're gonna go and, excuse me, we're gonna have enough money for 10 shooters and the eighth shooter went off for 60 and I didn't capitalize on it. Like my whole vision of craps is to do this and it happened that I didn't get the money that I was supposed to get. You might walk away thinking that's a failure. Failure on your part to recognize the good role or a failure on your part to go all in on the good role when it happened, right? That's, that's a mental game that you play yourself. And I wanna remind you of this. And I tell my baseball players, this. You, you know that I'm, that I'm doing, um, and I coach baseball. Actually, this year I'm off coaching, but I've coached baseball for, geez, 17 years or something like that. And one of the things I tell my guys is this, because baseball, um, and, and to some extent, Wrestling. So Joe from Crafts Masters here. Wrestling is this way too. Um, and, but baseball is a game made of failure. The whole point of baseball is to fail, right? If you, we say this all the time. If, if you've got a 300 batting average, you're failing 70% of the time and you go to the Hall of Fame for it, right? That's a game made on the, the, the heaping pile of failure. And that's what the way, that, and I got to tell my guys all the time, especially because they're young, they're, they're 13 to 18 year olds. And I tell them this, this is my, my, my message to them all the time, that failure is an event, not a person. Because you will fail, right? You will have a failure of an event. You have a crappy day at the table. You have a bad set of roles, right? I have played with guys who I will not name, who are really good dice controllers. Like really, really good. I've watched them play online. I've seen the rolls. I've seen the consistency. And you go to the table and it's a point seven out or it's three rolls and out. And this is the message to them. Like it, events happen, bad things happen. It doesn't mean you are the failure. It means that the event, a bad event happened. You gotta remember that. This is kind of, like I said, it's kind of a, you know, put it up on your wall, like a, like a desk sign kind of thing. But somebody told me this a long time ago and it stuck with me that failure is an event not a person, and things will happen to you. So bet boldly. Do your thing. And when I say bet boldly, I don't mean put your paycheck out there. I mean bet boldly. Do your thing the way you do your thing, and you'll win what you're going to win. And if somebody next to you wins 10K and you win 1,100, doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you didn't bet as aggressively as that guy did. That's the only difference, right? So there's that comparison thing again. Remember this. This is a little thing to remember, but I want you to, I want you to remember it. Now, with that said, we're going to go to the table here in a minute, and we're going to look at this here. This is the rolls that Jeremy did the other day. This is the, this is the color-up roll that he did on Vince's strategy. So Jeremy, as you know, ran Vince's strategy. Um, it was the, which one? Oh, it was the ultimate ROI right? Um, it doesn't matter which one it was. The, the point of the thing was he ran the strategy and did really good with it. He actually won, I think, 688 on this, on this set of rolls. <clears throat> and when you look at Jeremy's thing, let me go ahead and expand this out. Can I make this bigger? Oh, I can't make it bigger, darn it. Um, I'm in a presentation and I can't. Ah, ah, get out of here. Um, I don't think I can make that bigger. But if you look over here on the right-hand side, if you can see it on your phones, there's this long ass roll. It's like 20 whatever shots that it is, right? And it looks great. It's like, man, this is a long roll. But then you break it down and look at it. If you look at it linearly or not non-linearly, you look at it sequentially, what actually happened in the roll. And I want you to put yourself in this place because your strategy may have won pretty good, but there's a couple of gotchas in here that I want to highlight. And I call these out when I broke down Marlene's roll from Hawaiian crap shoes. Here's what, what I want you to look at. So first of all, crap roll. Second of all, crap roll. If you're placing the box, if you're doing the skill 66, let's say the skill 66, right? You lose 66 bucks, you're minus 66. Here, you're minus 67, because you would have, you would have actually added your dollar on that one, right? So right here, you're, you're boom, you're done, right? 
The second roll comes, and let's say that you're gonna be, again, an inside better, okay? And here's the thing that I want you to think about. When you look at a roll that's super long like this, it's the, it's the, the, it's the timing of the events that I think are important, right? Here is, you got one, two, three, four eights, which is fantastic, right? You got one, two, three, four tens, which is amazing. And you've got one, two, two fours. And between the fours and the tens, you have one, you have four tens, two fours, and you have one, two, only really two seven outs in that whole bit. So you have six tens and fours versus two sevens. <clears throat> if you count the last two <clears throat> come out sevens, if you're working on the come out, you're still six to four over the seven with the fours and tens. That's fantastic, right? You got a couple of hard ways in here that are pretty cool. But think about this part of it. When can you collect? If you're a press type of better, when can you collect? Here's the weirdness, right? This right here is a point winner, which you may have pressed up on, right? But really this first eight, you're not collecting on that one. If you're, if you're a place better, you don't collect on the first eight. You only maybe collect here, and you maybe collect on the second eight, maybe on that third eight. So out of four eights, three of them happened at a time when you could have pressed them. And in this great roll, and that's an amazing roll right there. It's a really above average roll. If you're press the eight, press the eight, press the eight, like trying to get your eight to 90, go from 25 or 30 bucks on the eight to 60 to 90, and now I'm gonna get a black, you never got your black chip. You never get your black chip if you're doing that. That's an important thing to look at on a great roll is how often do the numbers you're playing on come out right? And when they come out, here again, look at the four. Um, the first four that comes, you don't get to collect on that. The first 10 that comes, you don't get to collect on that one either because these are come out numbers, right? They're come out numbers. And because you're a place better, right? And even if you're a, a come better, take the pass line out of it, you don't get to collect on the first 10. You might, you might press on the second 10, you might do a same bet and get some money back here. On this four, you only get to collect when it comes home. And that's it. Um, and again, even though the fours and tens beat the seven in, in air quotes X number of times, there was only one time you could collect money on a four and there's really only um, one, two, three times you can collect on a 10 out of that whole roll. Um, and that's interesting to me. So it looks like you could have crushed this thing. However, when they come is a big thing. It's really a big deal. Now, in looking at this, when I see the repeats in here, again, knowing, it, again, hindsight being 2020, as a come better, right? Let's look at it, and we'll all roll it out here, or I'll, I'll put them on the screen there, right? But a come, the, the pass line better wins here. Whoop, sorry. Let's go back a screen. I lost my thing. The, the pass line better wins on this one, on this one, this one, and this one. So pass line with odds does great. Pass line actually wins on here and here too. The pass line player in this particular roll set would have crushed it because all those point winners that were made. But the come better doesn't do all that great. Um, if you look at the, kind of the sequence of things, they will event, they'll make money in here. This is a come bet that'll pay, um, but this come bet, this come bet, and this come bet do not pay, okay? This come bet, pays way out here, maybe. This come bet here might pay here, maybe. Um, if this was a come bet, it probably pays there, which means this one doesn't pay before this thing ends. It's very interesting to look at the order in which your things would have, would have happened as you break a roll down. So what I want you to do is, I know that a lot of you all play along with myself and Jeff and Jeremy and others as we're rolling things out, print the rolls out like this and go through and look at it and, and do them um, as I do here sequentially. Like shooter number three had a great roll, but really um, you gotta break down, let me get the, the, the drawing pad back on there. You gotta break down roll one, roll two, roll three, inside that monster roll, this is what he did. And the sequence of events that happen down this line of events, I think is where that was where you can really learn. And no, you cannot go back and, and, re, and of course say, oh, I, I woulda, coulda, shoulda. What you've gotta do is look at this and say, well, my strategy would have done X. My other strategy would have done Y. Neither one of them made as much money as they could. 
And this is a pretty typical roll, right? A guy makes a, sets a point, rolls a number, makes a point. Quick repeater, sets a point, makes a bunch of rolls, makes his number. That's a great set of outcomes. If you're not making good money on this, then your strategy's got a hole in it. And not a hole in terms of loss, it's a hole in terms of it's not really capitalizing on the events. And frankly, the events here aren't that many. It's a good roll, but how many, how many times could you have pressed your six? You could have pressed it once here, collected on that press once here, if you ever collected on it, right? Six goes from, you know, 12 to 12 to 24. You might get a $27 or a $20 collection here, or you might have pressed it again and you're done, right? How often can you get a, can, can you collect? I think that's a very important thing. How often can you collect on the rolls? And Vince, um, I'm, I'm sitting here at the desk so I can kind of see some of the, some of the chats. You're saying some interesting things. Um, no short term is profits. You're saying there's no pressing, just investing and collecting. Um, you know me, I've, I've talked about this a lot. There are times where I press to the, to the roof, right? If I get even in a hand, I might press to the roof, but more often than not, I'm a collect up a unit, up a unit, up a unit. One thing I like that Vince does a lot now is this. I, if I can, can I still draw? No, let me get my drawing back. Vince is doing this thing and I don't know what you're calling it, but I'm going to write this down. <coughs> Use my pen here. You're doing this thing called the ceiling. So let's say you get your your eight, and you have a thirty dollar ceiling, and you press it to thirty, or you get it to thirty, take a hit, go back down to twelve, get it to thirty, go back down to twelve, and you're kind of in this loop of not going to the roof, but you're in this this collection to a point loop, and then coming back around on some of your strats. I think that makes a lot of good sense. I like that that idea because. We want to always be collecting, but nobody really gives you the way to always be collecting. Sometimes it's a press by one and bring down. It's a pretty good strategy to do that, but I like going to a, to a ceiling and then same betting and coming back. And that's where like my Tom Brady strategy is, right? When I, the, 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 the goat that I showed you the other day, the six and the eight, I bring them up to 30 and then we just collect every time from there. So I usually either get from 18 to 30 in one hit and then it's just same bet all afternoon while we're rolling. And again, even here on that one, not a whole lot of collection chances, right? I get it to 30 here, I collect once, I collect twice on it and that's it. So it does pay for itself, but not big time. So there's a kind of visual breakdown of the color up roll. And I hope that that makes sense what I'm doing here. I think this approach to writing them down, again, in sequence as they happen, I think is a big help to me to see how we, how I, how not how I, how I should have attacked it, but how what I have does attack it. I say, well, if I didn't make money, why didn't I make any money? Where should I have money? And how can I change my strategy to take better advantage of roles like this, where we have a couple of short points, a long point, some come out sevens, and two really shitty starting points, right? So lose, lose, how do we attack a better role? And I think being visual about it and then, yeah, applying, applying your brains to it, I think is pretty, pretty cool. So there's, there's what I wanna, talk about today. So with that said, um, let's go to the table and let's do a couple of quick just strategies, a couple of quick views of this thing. And, and let's just take a basic strategy. We'll do a couple of them for you. So one would be, um, we'll do the come ladder first, right? And my come ladder, as you know, my simplest walk up strategy, puck will be off. We're going to walk up to the table. We're going to let him establish a point. It's going to be nine. And the come ladder, as you know, is a seven unit bet. There's five, there's seven units. I'll do it at the simple five hour level. And the first shooter comes up, they establish a point of nine. I come into the come, seven out, right? First thing's a seven out, make, make a nickel. Yippee, right? There's our first little bit of profit. The second shooter makes a point of five. I come into the come with five bucks. He rolls a three and it goes bye-bye. Then I come back into the come, and he rolls an eight, and we go to the eight. My next come bet is a seven. So what happens, we pay here, we lose here, we're out of the hand, and we've lost one unit when that three comes out, right? So that was a net loss of one, effectively, on that second shot, okay? Or actually, was a, I'm sorry, was it was a tie, because we lost one, one, one. So we're treading water here on two crappy rolls, that strategy did okay. Now here's the real test of this strategy. 
can something like this work on a longer size roll, right? Because people say that's a grinding strategy, John. That strategy sucks. Like, yeah, it's a grind, right? It's grind. It's going to work good on the short roll, right? You have that one soft spot in the come. What does it do when the roll actually happens and it's a decent kind of roll? Let's take a look at it. And again, I'll do it without odds. Just for the sake of simplicity, okay? So here we are again. We're going to get a point established. It'll be an eight. Then we go into the come and the shooter rolls another eight and it goes to the eight. Now we're gonna wait a minute. Puck is off. Shooter rolls, it's a hard 10. Point's gonna be 10. We come into the come, shooter rolls, an eight, right? So this comes down and gets paid. This one travels up into the eight. That can come back to my rack. And again, my rack right here is my seven chips. I'm gonna put that in the profit side. And now we're here on the eight. Our next come bet comes out at size two because we have one set finally. And that's going to go into the 10, and that's going to be our point hit. Now we let him go and establish a new point. Here's that six where I'm not getting any juice on. I'm going to come into the come now with a four size bet on the six. It's one, then two, then four, and it goes to the six right away. He makes his point, and now I'm done. This strategy waits a minute, right? The thing about the come ladder is that you get three come bets set, and, you're, and now you're a, you're a spectator for a while. So I watch. He rolls a two, nothing happens. He rolls a four, nothing happens. We get a 10. That's great. My come bet for the 10 comes down and gets paid. I have four units back in my rack. I've got five units out here, four on the six, one on the eight. My come ladder strategy does not let me go back out again. I cannot come back out unless I have more money than what's out here. I got to cover that by one. I'm a spectator for a minute, right? I'm a spectator. So the second 10 comes. And then we get an eight, an eight hard. So that eight comes down and it gets paid a unit. Comes back to the rack. And now I've got four here. I'll put five units out there at risk. That five units goes to the nine. And then we get a six to roll. So my six comes down and it gets paid four units. That's a great result, right? We love that result. Come back to the rack, please. Next roll is going to be another come bet. And again, I have five out here. I come out with six units. You know, we keep growing the bet as we go, right? Six units in the come. It goes to the four. That's a huge bummer. Makes his point. I got all my money on the table. Three, seven, seven, two, and I'm done, right? And on a great roll, boom, we're out. We actually lost a unit on that roll. Right? And any come better would have been in the same position as that. Right? We'll do a regular like three point Molly type of thing, and you'll find that it, unless you're rolling the Molly all the way through, you're not going to capitalize. Let me do the same roll with a three point Molly or three point Johnny kind of a roller. So I'm going to go ahead and get more chips. Come ladder, fail. Failure is an option all the time, even on a really good strategy on a really good roll. Isn't that interesting how that worked out? Here's a hundred bucks. Okay, we'll put it in the back. hundred bucks in the back of the rack. All right, I think you guys can't see the rack actually. Let's do that. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with a three point Molly type of shot. And I'm gonna play this three point Johnny style. I'm not gonna do the pass line. And don't ask why, I just don't. I like to let the pass line do its thing. I tend to bypass it. I'll do it both ways so you can see the differences here when we get paid and when we don't get paid. But let's do it without the pass line first. And again, I'll do a come bet system, straight up three rolling come bets. Okay, so again, the point gets established, it's a nine. One unit in the come, it gets paid because of that short roll. That comes back, this comes back. Next roll, establish a five into the come. That three loses. Come into the come again. It's gonna to go to the eight. We're gonna go ahead and do max odds, right? Because we love our eights. There's, I can do 25 bucks on a $5 bet. Boom, there's a quarter in odds. Next roll, seven, bye-bye. 30 bucks out of the door. And we won one time, five bucks. We lost 30 bucks on the second one. Third shooter comes out. We get a point of eight established. I come into the come with a chip. It travels to the eight. And again, we're going to go ahead and go max odds because we can afford it. This is, yeah, goes to the eight. 
Now the shooter goes boom, immediate eight right back, which is fantastic, right? So that's gonna come out. We're gonna get paid 30 on the back side, five in the front, the puck is gonna be off, and we've actually recovered the loss that we had earlier, which is kind of nice. We did okay there. Now they come out to a six. Or I'm sorry, this is the, the 10. We come out to the 10, we go into the come again, it goes to the eight, and once again, we're gonna go ahead and drop max odds on the eight, put the quarter right back on the eight. Boom, there's the quarter on the eight. Then they roll a 10, the puck is off. I'm sorry, we go into the come again, it goes to the 10, the puck comes off. I'm gonna do Johnny style, this one unit in odds on the 10. The puck is off, they set a point of six, we come back out, they hit their point immediately, that goes to the six, and again, we're at max odds on that six. I'll make that look like a quarter. And here's our three-point Molly kind of player. You've got your three combat set, they got odds on them appropriately, now you're waiting for things to happen. They set their point of six, there's a two in the come out, nothing happens. They set a point of four, nothing happens. The 10 comes. So four, easy 10, that's gonna pay 20 bucks back here five bucks in the front, that all comes back, and our next comeback is ready to go. It goes right back to the 10, because they went 10 back to back. Next roll is gonna be an eight, which comes down, and it's gonna get 30 bucks in the back, five bucks in the front. That can all come back. Our next comeback now moves to the nine. Then our six pays. Again, 30 in the back, five in the front. Next come bet is working. That goes to the four. They make their point, and then it's three, seven, two, seven, and all this goes away. Uh, oh, sorry, these should have had odds on them. My bad. Single odds there, single odds there, and 40 in odds. We'll do it with reds. 20. 40 odds on the nine. Actually, I would do, yeah, I would do double odds on the nine, um, like so. I would do 20 in odds on the nine. There we go. So it's it's $10 in odds on the 10, it's 20 on the nine, it's 10 on the four. So there's what would have happened, right? We would never have come back out again. This is this is the end of the roll and we're done. This all goes away and our net for that, for the come better is here's your 100 bucks that you started with. So all this is profit. And again, on a nice roll, you're at 25, 45 bucks in profit after this collects. Now that's okay, right? Remember that Jeremy, using Vince's strategy, made $688 on the same roll, right? 688 on the same roll. Isn't that interesting how that worked out? Um, we made 45 bucks as a $5 come better. Now, of course, if I was betting 10 and higher odds, that would have been different. But from a percentage standpoint, Right, we bought in for a hundred, and we ended up profiting. Let's see, we profited forty-five. So forty-five percent isn't bad, okay, at, a, at the five-dollar level. Jeremy bought in for five hundred bucks, and won six eighty-eight. So let me do some quick math for you here. If I do five hundred divided by six eighty-eight, Jeremy um, had a twenty-eight percent win. Is that right? Yeah, 28% win versus us having 45% win, doing it this way. Isn't that interesting? I tell you all the time, it doesn't matter. The chips don't matter, right? The, the, the number of checks that you bring back to your act does not matter. What matters, or I'm sorry, the number of dollars you bring back doesn't matter. It's, it's what the chips represent. So 45 profit out of 100 is 45% profit. That's pretty damn good. Interesting. I find, again, the percentages really matter to me. So, all right, let's roll the skill 66 out this time. So it's gonna be, we're gonna need, I'm gonna take uh, 300 bucks here because, actually we'll take 200 bucks. Only because I know in advance how much we're gonna lose. Um, I wanna make sure my rack has enough money to cover it. So there's 200 bucks, okay? And we're gonna do, um, I know that, Skill and Luck likes to play the half press, so we'll do a half press as we go. We're gonna, we're gonna same bet the first one, half press from that point forward. That's how, that's how I think, that's how dial I think plays it. So, first shooter comes out with a nine. We come out with 66, or 44, or 66 inside, right? There's 75 bucks. 
we're gonna get back nine dollars change and we're gonna go 66 inside and there we go right the first shooter makes a nine seven and it all goes away down 66 dollars the second shooter comes up they establish a five we're going to drop again we'll do 50 we don't have to we have to do 75 75 bucks out nine dollars back and again we'll go out with 66 bucks there's 18 15 15 and 18. Okay, they get a three, no harm, no foul. They get an eight. We drop a buck because that pays 21. We're gonna say 22 pressure, come inside, press up to 88, and the seven comes, and all of it goes away again. So now we're down on our luck a little bit. Puck is off. Next shooter comes up, they establish an eight. 66 inside, there's 50. So we'll take, I think I have enough money here. We may have to go to Vince's Loan Shark to get some money. We'll see. So I can do 15, 15, 15 and one. There's 15. We are totally mortgaged. We have a dollar left on our rack. We have exactly the buck that we need to make our press if it happens, right? Shooter rolls, set the eight, 66. They hit their eight. Puck goes off. We drop a buck. And now the game is afoot, as they say. We're going to go 22 inside. That pays 21. We drop a buck to get our 22 pressure on the inside, if we can do it. Okay. Press those up. Bring these out. And now we're at where we want to be. We're at 24. We're at $88 inside. Now we just need a hit. Okay. And again, here comes one of those non-productive rolls, right? Goes to a 10. We don't care, right? But the eight gets to hit, which is fantastic, right? That's going to pay. I'll pay it like this, 28 bucks for 24. We go down to 44 inside. Skill 66 brings us back to back earth. This shooter is covered. Of course, the other shooters are still in arrears, but we're going to work our rack anyway. Put our ones over here. And we'll start trying to build ourselves back to the 200 bucks that we started with. We start with 200, we were down to a buck, and now we gotta build ourselves back as we go. I'm gonna keep getting greens in these, in for these reds as we go, because I want you to see the rack grow back to where it needs to be. We're already back in the rack here with 65 bucks out of the 200. So we're working our way through it on that second hit of the eight. Now we get a 10, it doesn't matter, puck is off. They throw a six. Again, we're not getting paid on that six, but it sets the new point. And now our six can get paid on the second one. They hit the point right away. That's a $14 winner. And again, we're gonna go ahead and do same bet the first time on these numbers, and then we'll start half pressing from there. So we're gonna same bet the first time, bring back the whites, and the six has now has been paid, and we're solid. Puck is off, they roll a two. New point's gonna be four, we don't care. They roll a 10. They roll a 10, we don't care. They roll an eight, which pays 14 bucks. We'll actually pay that 15 for one out of the rack. There's one, 15, I'll bring that back. Now the eight has been collected on. They've both been collected on one time. Now we get a nine. And again, the same thing, we'll do 15 for one on that nine to come back to our rack. The nine's been collected on. They are all eligible to be pressed on now, right? The six comes after the nine. That's great, that pays. 14 bucks, we're gonna go up one and pull. Press it by one, so press it by six bucks and bring back the change to our rack. Then we get a four, the puck is off, and then it's three, seven, two, seven, and we're done, right? What's in our rack? Start with 200, we got 50, one, 10. There's two, there's another 10 bucks. So there's 172 in the rack. Now, technically speaking, these aren't losses. There's another 50 bucks out here because the shooter didn't seven out. We just stopped, the, we stopped rolling. 
Um, so there's technically speaking another 50 bucks out here. So you, you could say that you're at 100, 50, 70, 178, 177, including what we pulled down from that, right? Once you're actually down on that great roll with an inside maneuver. Think about that, right? It was it was the perfect roll, right? It was like, it was 20 something rolls. It's like 66 to 88 to 44 and boom, 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 boom. But it's not boom, 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 boom because of when they come, when they come out. So the, the distribution didn't work out that way. And that time it ends up being a non-starter for us, which is, um, it's both sad and entertaining at the same time because I think it's important to see how the strategies play on the same thing. Now, if I'm skill and luck, what I'm doing here is this. I'm looking at that strategy and what adjustment do I make to that strategy? Well, my adjustment is, I think, clear. You work the come outs, right? If you're not taking a line bet, there's no reason not to work the come out on a strategy like that, okay? If we do that same thing again, work in the come out, does it change? I don't know, let's find out. Let's do the same exact thing and see if it changes through working the come out. Here, here's another hundred, I'll do the same thing. And I wanna see, I actually don't know. This is a complete guess on my part. I think it might make a difference. But let's see. Let's go back out. We'll work everything. So we're gonna get the line set up with 66 bucks. Give me a second to get it set. There's 66. All right, this comes back to the rack. All right, so if we're working the come outs, we get a nine. And that pays 21. We drop our dollar right away and press this thing up. All right, we're gonna go to 66 right away. Oops, that goes here. And then we seven out, boom, goes away. Same as the first time. There's no difference there other than we lost an extra dollar on the first on the first roll. Not, not the end of the world, okay? Now we're gonna work it again. We're gonna come back out again with $66. So 50, 60, five, 66. Let's get some, some good change here. Five of those. All right, here we go. 66 again. All right, now they come out. They establish a point of five. Boom. We're going to drop a buck. We're going to get paid 21 on that. As the point gets set, you're getting paid now. The, the point being set is no longer a wasted roll for us. We're going to get the pressure. We're going to go build everything up. Okay. Point's been set to five. Now we have a three, which doesn't matter. The eight hits, though. The eight is going to pay 27, 28 bucks. 24 pays 28 and we come back down to 44. So here, we're out of the hand. We're back in our rack with money. Not a lot, this earns you five bucks, but look at the difference between this hand and the last hand, right? On the first time we did it with bypassing the come out roll, we lost 66, we lost 67. Here, we lost 66 or lost 67 and then earned four bucks. So we're in the same two rolls Different outcome completely, okay? Puck is off. We're already at our 44 level, so now we're able to start collecting. If eight comes, boom, set to point of eight, that's a collect, that's gonna be 15 for one. 15 for a buck out of the rack. We're gonna rack that first hit. The eight now is ready to be pressed. And you might even do this kind of thing, where you have your rack sort of set up with the, the inside numbers five, six, eight, nine, and the eight has been collected on, so now the eight can be pressed. Keep track of things, okay? But they hit the eight, and um, that's their point being set. They hit the eight a second time. So again, that can pay, um, we'll pay it 14. And now we're on the press and collect system. Now that goes to 18 bucks, and we come back. Okay, we pressed it up by, I'm, I'm sorry, I owe myself another nickel. We pressed it up by half a unit as that comes out. Puck is off because they hit their point. Now they get a 10. No big deal there. The eight comes a second time. Now the eight's at, at 18. 
and it pays 21, well, again, we'll press it up by one unit. We'll take it to 30. Now the eight's at 30 bucks. We've collected on it a couple of times, which is great. And we've gotten it moved farther ahead than we did before. Okay, they make their point of 10. Now we come out to a point of six. And because we're here and we're working, that's gonna pay the first time the six. Now it gets paid 15 for one. They hit their six a second time. So it's gonna pay again, 14 bucks. We'll do, we'll do 15 for one again. But I'm gonna drop a buck and ask them to press me one unit. Now the six goes to 18, we bring 10 back to the rack. Point is made. They hit a two, no harm, no foul. They hit a four, we're not on it. 10, 10, the eight hits for 35 bucks. 25, 35, drop a dollar to bring it to 36, collect the difference. Now the nine hits. First time for the nine to be hit, so it's gonna be a collect. Again, we'll do 15 for one. We'll press it by one, we'll bring back the 10, give the bank their dollar back. Then we get a six, six is at 18. That pays 21. We're gonna press by one to 24. Bring the rest of that home. We get a four. I'm sorry, we get a, that's right, the four comes next, and that's three, seven, two, seven, blah, 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 and we're done, right? If we bring this money back, how did we do this time compared to the last time? Now, I should say this. I actually can't bring this money back because we're working the come outs. We get a three, then a seven, which does take all this money. So you're working the come outs. You're, all, your, all your beautiful press bets go away on that come out seven. So this potential profit goes bye-bye. But look at our rack. Let's see if we made money this time. Let's color ourselves up. There's five in white. There's a hundred in green. And I know we made money because I can tell by the size of these stacks, but there's, there's 75, there's 100. So there's our starting, there's 100 in red. That was our starting money. And again here, 50, 60 bucks. So we start with 200, we end up with 60 at the end of that. Um, by my calculations, I think that's about 30% win. That's not too bad, right? I'll take that, 60 bucks on 200. That's a pretty good way of doing that. Look at the difference though, right? When you evaluate a strategy, say, what, where are the holes in my strategy? Well, yeah, the come out seven is a big risk to take, right? But working the come out might be a thing you should be thinking about. And again, if I would do this same, this same procedure on multiple different roles, not just this one here, on my roles, on, well, my roles are terrible, but other people's roles, I think you should compare working the come out or not on a place betting inside system because you're not getting the four and 10 here. You're not getting the field here. You have a lot of wasted rolls. You can pick up the wasted rolls by working the come out. And this shows a 30% win versus a, like a 12 or 13% loss just by working the come out. That's the one change I made to it, okay? And again, we're not even looking at Wayland stuff. We're not even looking yet at laddering. What does the ultimate inside look like where you're laddering the losses? On those first two hits, we would have been pressed up and pressed up. We'd have been probably at 90 bucks on these bets for that third shooter. And that first shot on the eight, on shooter number three, probably comes in at 105, right? So think through, again, the different strategies that you know, that you've seen, that you've seen me do, and Waylon do, and Vince do, and Greg do, and Ken do, and Mike at On Point does, and Midmo Yo. The things you all are working on, put your numbers out like this. Put out, I'm gonna go back to my chair here. I gotta get back to, back to talking again. But put it out like that. Let's go back to the screen um, there. Lay your numbers out when you watch somebody else shoot sequentially, like you can see here, and run your strategies against those and make a simple adjustment. Just make a little tiny adjustment to how do I capitalize on what I'm seeing? And then do that thing over the course of many rolls and see if you're seeing a trend up or a trend down over the course of time. I think there's definitely, um, definitely motion to that. Um, Dr. S is asking me this, um, what rules to follow to call this right? Yes, there are rules. Um, I guess my glass off. The st a strategy is, 
a couple of things. It's, it's how much are you betting? Where are you betting? What are you doing with your wins? Those are the components really of a strategy, right? Where's, where does my money go? Here we put the money on the inside. How much goes there? 67 bucks. What are the rules that govern what I do with my wins? In this case, the first one we press, the second one we regress, every win thereafter, it's same bet, press by one, press by one, press by one. That's the strategy. The strategy is what do you do with your wins most of the time. I was talking to Midmo Yo, because he has a strategy where he's got this, the, 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 I think he's got the six, eight, four, and 10, the even numbers, right? And I said to him, that's been done a million times, right? He was worried about, am I taking somebody else's thing? Um, have I done it in the, sure. Everybody does the even numbers, right? The difference is when I do the Tom Brady strategy, I press my six and eight to 30 and I same bet forever. I get my hard ways pressed up to 50, my outsides pressed to 75 and I stay there forever, right? That's the way I do it, right? He's doing it with a much lower bet on the hard ways, right? He's differed the strategy. The what you play is the same, the how much you play is different and how he handles wins are different. I think that's what makes a strategy to me is really the rules around how you handle your wins. Um, and, and the rules that govern it. Like when I do the come ladder or the, or the horseman, there are very strict rules that I follow at the base of those strategies, really strict rules at the baseline of those strategies that I follow. From there, I go into things like this. So um, unfortunately, I can't cover this topic as long as I want to because to do more than a couple of strategies like that would take me three hours to get through it. There's just too many, there's too many things to, to there's not, not enough time <laughs> for sure. Um, so I think that, um, I think that um, this is a good exercise for y'all to do, right? Get your wind craps out, get your crap sap out. If you have table, do a table and run your stuff against these rolls. This is a great set of rolls because it does tell an interesting story. This is two really bad shots. This is a 0.7 out. This is a point with one number being hit and then you're out. And then it's a good series of rolls, but the sequencing is weird because there's a couple of quick points that make it interesting. So anyway, roll your rolls against this one here. Do it against other, other folks' rolls. This is a good habit to get into practice-wise. As far as a, a practice session goes, this is great. It, it's no indication how you're gonna do it at a casino. Call that out, right? This is not, you can't know that this is gonna happen before you go. What you can know is that if something like this were to happen, my strategy would work okay. And when you find yourself in the moment, you don't know that it's gonna be quick point, quick point, quick point. You don't know that. But you know that your strategy can hang if it is a quick point, quick point, quick point. You know that you're okay in that situation if it does arise. You also know that your strategy can do okay on a better roll. If you got those bases covered and you don't get completely hammered on this one, you're not going out with like your whole paycheck across, that's a good way to look at this thing. So, um, and Eric, I actually asked Jeremy, on, I did, I actually emailed him and said, hey, I wanna use your stuff. Is it okay if I screenshot your video and use your roles? And he gave me permission. Um, as long as I link back to him, which I will. There's a link to this video in the description below. Um, or there will be after the video is shot. And I'll also put a link in the little clicky thing above. So, all right, there we go.